Alright, so I'll level with you guys. I have no clue how to do an intro, and you've seen the title of this video anyway, so let's just cut to the chase. What are Godot's signals? Well, put shortly, they're Godot's implementation of the observer pattern. A great way for event-driven programs, which video games most certainly are, to have objects communicate with each other. And this observer pattern works by having one node, called the subject, keep a list of all other nodes, called observers, that it makes run a method when told to. In the case of Godot, this is done by connecting signals between nodes, with the signals emitter node being the subject, and the signals receiving node being the observer. The nice thing about doing it this way is that the observer list can be dynamically changed, or even empty without making any difference to the subject node. Allowing your nodes to exist decoupled and independent of each other, allowing for easier testing and more flexibility. Whereas, if you hard-coded connections between nodes, and any of said nodes were to be absent from the scene, for any reason, it would cause a lot of errors and potentially crash the game. So now that you have an idea of what Godot's quote-unquote signals are, and why you would want to use them, how do you actually go about using them? Well, signals can be set up in ostensibly two ways, the first of which being through the editor. This is done pretty easily by just selecting the node that's going to be the subject, looking to the right side of the editor and swapping from the Inspector tab to the Node tab. Here you'll see all the signals available in your particular node and what part of said node's inheritance that signal comes from. And once you find the signal you want to use, either select it and click the Connect button or double-click the signal itself to pull up the connection window. From there you'll be shown the current node tree and can select any node that has a script attached to it to be the observer. Below the node tree, you'll see the name of your signal's method, which you can change to be whatever you want. And below that is the final connect button, which will both connect the signal to the observer, meaning that it's added to the subject's observer list, and create a new method in said observer's script. That method works just like any other would, outside of the fact that it'll be called whenever its associated signal is emitted. And that's enough for basic use of signals, but what if you need to do more? Well, the observer among you may have noticed another option tucked away beside the method name. This is the advanced settings switch. When toggled, we get three more options. The first allows us to add many kinds of arguments to the signal method. This can be great for when we have multiple nodes running the same script, but need to react differently to the same signal. For this, I'm going to give you guys a little demonstration. Here you can see we have a button and two sprites. Both those sprites share script, and when we go to that script, you can see a little green icon right here. When we click that icon, it will show us that both of our sprites are connected to the button's press signal via the on button pressed method. Now what this method actually does is it makes it to where every time the button emits the press signal, it makes our sprites rotate. This is cool, but what if I want them to rotate in opposite directions while maintaining the same method and script? Well to do that, it's pretty easy. All I have to do is come down here and add an argument, and then multiply the rotation by that argument. And then I'll have to come over here, click the button, and edit its first connected signal, turning on the advanced options, and adding a real argument, and putting that to negative one. And once I've done that, all I have to do is just do the same thing over again, but for the other button. So come over here, edit, real, add, and we'll do it, it for one this time instead of negative one. And there we go, they now rotate in opposite directions. So with that demonstrated, the next option is deferred, which when enabled adds the signal to a queue to be ran after the current logic loop has finished, but before the next. This can be good for timing and performing certain actions, like disabling collision shapes. Then finally we have the last option, one shot, which does exactly what it sounds like. After the signal gets emitted for the first time, it will be disconnected. Now, with all that out of the way, what about when you need to dynamically connect or disconnect signals? Well, that's where the previously mentioned second way of connecting them comes in, the connect function. This function originates within the base object class, meaning that this function, and by extension signals in general, can be used within any kind of node. Said function takes several arguments, giving it all the same functionality as the signal connection window itself. The first three arguments being the name of the signal that the subject will emit, the node you want to be the observer, and finally the name of the method within that node that will be called when the signal is emitted. After that, we have the arguments that constitute the advanced options starting with an array that holds the arguments we would bind to our signal. The nice thing about binding arguments to signals this way, rather than via the signal connection window, is that you can bind many more kinds of variables, like node references, than you otherwise could. 
The following and final argument is an integer with different values corresponding to different ways the connection itself can behave, with the default value of 0 being the normal connection behavior, a value of 1 causing the connection to become persistent, making said connection be saved alongside the connected node whenever it is serialized into a file. A value of 4 makes the connection become one shot, and finally a value of 8 causes a simple but unorthodox behavior. Every time you connect a signal with 8 as its final argument, there will be an invisible tally that keeps track of the number of times this connection has been done, and said connection can only be disconnected if you attempt to disconnect it the same number of times. So now what about disconnecting signals? Well, that's pretty easily done within code 2 via the disconnect function. Said function takes just three arguments, those being the name of the signal you want to disconnect, the observer node that you're severing the connection to, and the name of the node's connected method. Of course, if you try to disconnect a connection that doesn't exist, it'll throw an error. So it's a good idea to use the isConnected method beforehand, which takes all the same arguments and will return a bool based on the connection's status. So all this is really neat, and you can do almost anything with signals at this point, but what if it's still not enough? What if you want to create your own custom signals? Well, luckily, not only is that possible, but it's also extremely easy. Just go up near the top of whatever script you're working in, and where you would normally put a variable, just type signal, followed by whatever you want the name of it to be. After doing this, the signal will appear within the signal section of the node tab, allowing you to connect it the same way you would inbuilt signals, while also being able to connect it via the previously discussed connect function. Once you're done connecting your signal to all the nodes, you need to actually emit it, which is equally as easy thanks to the emit signal function which lives up to its name by emitting whatever signal is put in as the first argument, with every additional argument being passed along to the receiving methods. Keep in mind, whatever additional arguments you pass won't override, but rather be passed along behind any that you sent in the original signal connection window or the connect method. And yeah, that's it. Pretty much everything you need to know about signals. I hope you found this video useful, and please, let me know what other topics you might want me to cover, and if you have any criticisms.